This is Stay Paid, the marketing podcast that gives listeners a competitive edge to stay motivated, find inspiration, and discover proven real-world tactics from some of the best marketers across the nation. Welcome to another episode of Stay Paid. I'm Joshua Stike. And I'm Luke Akery. And last week we talked about, or not last week, two weeks ago, because we're kind of sticking on this theme of, uh, of these content themes. We've been kind of talking about this idea of personal branding. So we talked all about how to build a personal brand. And then we ended with the final bullet point of this idea of having to build a community. Like that's part of your personal brand is actually building a community. But we're going to take it one step further and talk about how to build a tribe, yes. right? So a tribe of people that want to follow you as their leader that are rallied around a common cause. So a tribe, if you've ever read the book Tribes uh, by Seth Godin, it was written like in 2008, it's still highly relevant today, it continues to be extremely relevant to, for today's business. But a tribe is a group of people connected to one another, uh, connected to a leader, and most importantly, uh, connected to an idea. Mm. Share a common uh, values, shared idea. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So there's the idea of like human beings can't help it. We need to belong. We want to belong to something. So you're going to be in a tribe. You're either part of a tribe today or you're leading a tribe. You can't have a tribe without a leader and you can't be a leader without a tribe. All that's missing is you and your vision. And this really plays into this idea of marketing uh, uh, as we look at, you know, state paid and sales and marketing podcast uh, where marketing used to be all about advertising right? Television advertisements. Well, first it was, it was, uh, you know, signage, then television advertisements. And, and even, even today on social media, you have a lot of advertising, but really today is all about engaging with tribes and then delivering those products and services, uh, with stories that are spreadable, right? That people actually want to share. It makes so much sense to put the effort into determining, you know, it's, what is it? Your vibe attracts your tribe, yeah. right? So determining what your tribe is because it, that is your brand. And ultimately, that's your first avenue into building true relationships with people because your vibe, your commonality, your uh, shared values, your shared goal has aligned you together. And that's where you can create these raving fans for your mm -hmm. business. And you can have a whole, there's so many multi-million dollar producers when you, when you talk to them, they just have a niche. Yeah. They, uh. they literally have a niche. And, and some of the most successful agents that we have interviewed or talked to and that I've known they literally, a lot of times it's like they had a niche when it came to like their culture mm -hmm. in their, in their community. There was a sub, you know, culture that they were a part of in their community and they just had that culture. And yeah. it's just like, wow, that is incredible how it can boost your business overall. Yeah. So many people make the mistake of trying to appeal to everybody versus zeroing in. You're better off having a tribe of 10 people that are all committed and following you as a leader or committed to a cause or rallied around a common connection, because what will those people do? they're going to go tell other people and they'll find Correct. other people like that, that want to be part of that tribe as well. So how to build a tribe only takes two things to turn a group of people into a tribe. It takes a shared interest and then a way to communicate. So you want to make sure that you're fostering a way for those uh, people mm -hmm. to communicate, whether that's a Facebook group or it's in-person events or whistling or wh oh, you really? guys can whistle together. I'm sure there's a whistling tribe, a whistling <laughs> tribe out there. Four ways of Look that up, Ethan. Is there four types of communications tribe? that happen. The leader to the tribe, the tribe back to the leader, the tribe member to tribe member, and then most importantly, tribe member to outsiders. Mm. So actually spreading the word. Uh, most important part though here, in order to assemble a tribe or be the leader of a tribe, you want you have to be remarkable. So what Seth huh. Godin talks about is this idea of like no one watches a boring YouTube video and no one shares a boring email. Ideas that spread win and boring ideas don't spread. So you mm, actually want to be heretical in your message, meaning like you want to almost have a, a statement or, or an idea that bucks the social norm yes. in order to actually get heard and to get uh, to, yes. for your ideas to be spread. Yeah. Knowledge is not power, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> knowledge is not power. Knowledge is not power. Knowledge plus execution is power. That's an idea of like everybody says knowledge is power, but you can open up and say knowledge is not power. Yeah. So if you think it's all about reading books and getting knowledge, then you are wrong. It's about execution. It's about our last knowledge. episode. Act, yeah, exactly. Track, but I'm just giving you an idea of like, it's not about being known, like, and trusted. You're interested now. Yeah. What, what do you mean? It's not about being known, like, and trusted. Everybody says it's about being known, like, and trusted. Yeah. People are afraid to be remarkable because of criticism. Right, because they don't want to be criticized for an idea. They want yep. to kind of blend in. Uh, the reality is people aren't afraid of failing. They're afraid of being criticized. Yeah. Right. They're, They're not afraid, afraid of, of being, being outcast wrong. from their tribe. Yeah. Because they have this idea that all these people that are watching me are my tribe or mm -hmm. my sphere, and this is where I get my value from. And the fear is 
if I am authentic, they might kick me out of this tribe. Yeah. But you look at the people that are the most successful, the Elon Musk, those, the Kardashians I've mentioned before, like they just don't care. Yeah. And you can do this at a super local level, you know, yeah. as a, as a business professional that serves a community. I found this graph too. I love it. There's this equation, pissed off people equals impact squared. <laughs> and they start with this graph. If you can picture it, maybe we'll make sure to put it in the show notes, but on the on the, uh, what do you call the up and down, the y-axis? Yeah. On the y-axis, you've got pissed off people going up. On the x-axis, you have your impact going left to right. In the lower left, you've got you watching kittens on YouTube, right? Mm. <laughs> and in the upper right, the most impact, the most pissed off people, you've got famous rock stars, president of Earth. Yeah. And you can be there as well. One of as the leader. greatest <laughs> quotes of Grant Cardone is 50% of the world hates me. That means 50% of the world loves me. Yeah. And both days I get paid. Or you only need 51% to win the presidency. Yeah. Type, even though that's not true because it's not by popular vote. But the, the idea there is, you know, hey, look, you can win the presidency with just half the world hate, yeah. loving you yeah. or half the nation. We'll talk about a little bit about leadership things. I know you spoke about this um, earlier earlier this week. Yeah. This idea of... of yeah, it was... Um, basically, it goes right along with this. John Maxwell is the father of leadership, right? And he talks about leadership as influence. So everybody is a leader because you're all influencing someone, whether it's a friend, a colleague, uh, someone that reports to you, your family. So you, you have influence over people. How do you know the quality of your leadership? And this plays right into tribes. You know the quality of your leadership by the quality of your, your followers. Mm. So look at your followers. One, do you have any? Because if you don't have any, well, you probably don't have a very good gift of leadership. Even though you have some <laughs> influence, if nobody's following you, there's, you're not really a leader. But when you look at the followers that are following you, what is the quality of those followers? Where they're at in their life, where they're, what they're doing, what they believe in. And that basically signifies to you the quality of your leadership. Yeah. And, you know, John Maxwell has this great, great quote when he was asked on a podcast where basically they said, hey, you've written all these books, Godfather of Leadership. You look back, what, what is, you know, some of the most important things or as you now know what you know, what do you say has been, has done the most impact for you in your life? And he said it was just a simple mantra every single day waking up and going, today I will add value to people. Mm, mm -hmm. He goes, today and every day I will add value to people. And he said, my goal every single day was to be a net positive in somebody's life, not a net negative. Mm. And he goes, that one simple thing made all the difference because now the lens by which he saw the world, the lens by which he took his actions, the lens by which he did his content, whatever it is, right? He did it in a way that's like, I just want to add value to people. And it was extremely successful for him. And you look at him as, you know, one of the greatest leaders and he teaches people how to be great leaders. But I think it's so important, like with your tribe, you know, how are you adding value to your tribe? If you want to be a remarkable leader, you need to have ideas and values that actually um, lift the people up that were within your tribe. That's why people will follow you. I hate to tell you this, but everybody's a hedonist, which means you're a self-seeker of pleasure. Mm. So every single person is out there trying to improve their life. They're part of your tribe because they think they're going to get something out of your tribe. Yeah. And that's not a, a bad thing. That's every human being. Right. So how do you actually create a tribe that adds value? Yeah. And, and your tribe will grow. I was the listening, that shrink don't I was listening to a video, I think this morning, where um, the guy was talking about, you know, we're very strategic in the business decisions that we make. And we're very strategic in uh, where we go to school or what, what classes we take as we're getting our career. Or if you went and got your license in real estate or insurance, that's all very strategic. But when was the last time you sat down and were strategic about who you're hanging out with? Yeah. Who are your friends? Like the friends that you have, are they the people that you happen to grow up with? Or are they the people that you happen to sit next to at work? Or did you strategically put yourself into a group where people around you you're constantly looking up to? And it doesn't even have to be from a uh, like more successful in business. Like it could be, you know, take like a father, for example. It could be hanging, making sure you're hanging around with someone who's a really good dad. Because mm -hmm. you'll always want to strive to be good with that as well, as opposed to it's one of the most powerful things. Either being relaxed into just hanging out with who you hang out with because of serendipity, or uh, even worse, you know, hanging out with people that make you feel better about yourself. Yep. <laughs> right. It's actually being around and surrounding yourself with people that will push you and finding that tribe and that leader that will do yeah, that. Yeah. All those who have kids, I shared this before. I, I saw this. Um, there was 
basically they tried to do a study on what has the most impact on kids yeah and what people and they basically found that it was the parents of the kids friends wow had the most impact on the kids uh, potential and development and i th- basically what they said that's crazy is they said it's basically if my kids hung out with your kids yeah well, your kids are a representation of what you let them do and yeah. what your values are and what you're going to allow to happen in your house and in your environment. So it's basically the most important people to vet and to surround your or to make sure that your kids are in a good environment is look at their friends, but most importantly, vet their parents and their values because that's going to pass down to their kids, which that's is going to And I was like, oh, that's so interesting, but it plays into what you're saying, which is you have to be intentional about the environment you place yourself in. And for your kids, you really have to be intentional with them because, yeah, you know, multiple minds there. So there you go. There's a little bit of insight into how you can build your own tribe within your community. Make sure to check out uh, that book as well. Seth Godin's super easy to read. All of Seth Godin's stuff is super easy to read, but it's inspirational and gives you some uh, tactical, tangible advice as well. Thank you so much for listening. You can head on. Oh, well, I was going to say yes. real quick before we I move on. I did the research oh, on nice. the whistling tribe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I, I, That's the kind of producing that we need go. right there. I think this will be fun for you guys in the audience. Uh, so there is a whistling tribe. I knew it. And uh, it's spelled H-M-O-N-G, but pronounced, uh, hopefully I'm doing this right, Mwau. H-M-O-N-G. They, uh, so, they, they, so the Mwau are an <laughs> ethnic group located in East and Southeast Asia, and they communicate through whistling. That's so fantastic. there you go. Okay. Yeah. There we go. We got the we'll whistling tribe. Little... I didn't know the whistle. I, I I didn't know for sure whistling. I knew clicking and stuff like that. People, okay. right. there's a whole language. Okay. It's like clicking, but, um... but yeah, they live in southern China, Vietnam, and, and you said well, knowledge isn't power. Yeah, go. knowledge what? isn't power. Knowledge plus execution <laughs> is power, Ow. people. You know why? Because knowing there's a whistling tribe does nothing for your life. <laughs> I don't know how you execute on it either, but if you could execute on it, maybe you could close a deal by learning how to whistle. There you go. Yeah. And that's your power tip for the day. Thank you so much for listening. Head on over to staypaidpodcast.com for the show notes and the video of this episode. And if you like this episode and want to show your support, join our tribe. Hop on over. Follow us on <laughs> please, Instagram. Please. We're at State Paid Podcast. Let us know what you think. Also, head on over to Apple Podcasts. Drop us a five-star review along with the comment. And the best way uh, to show your support is to simply share this episode with a friend. You want to hear a joke about a piece of paper? Yes. Never mind. It's terrible. Cut it out. <laughs> hey! There we go. Whoa. We're on a roll today. Whoa. <laughs> We're on a roll. <laughs> if you want to get a hold of me or Luke, you can email us at podcast at remindermedia.com. And you can find us on Instagram. We are at Stay Paid Podcast. For this episode of Stay Paid, I'm Joshua Stike. Guys, I'm Luke Acre. Who is in your tribe right now? And are you intentional about the tribe you're trying to create? That's the action item. Who's your tribe? Uh, and uh, here's a, even a good exercise for you. Could you define why uh, people are in your tribe? Mm. Like, what is it that is the common goal, common core values, common alignment that they have that brings people together? Because if you can understand that, then you can leverage that to do better marketing, to build a better brand, to add more value. Remember, the difference between top producers and mediocre producers in every business is top producers take action. Take action on that today. 